One more piece of information we need before discussing graphene electronic bonds is the concept of um, a reciprocal lattice. So on the on the left side you can see the summary of the graphene lattice where we have two Bravais lattice vectors, two, ba two basis vectors A1 and A2, and there is nearest neighbor vectors which uh, represent the translation of the carbon atom from it to its near nearest neighbors. There are three of those deltas. And you have two basis vectors, A1 and A2, for the real lattice. Now let's see the reciprocal lattice. And um, it's, it's also defined with respect to the triangular Bravais lattice. And um, it is... Um, I, can probably, I can probably draw it here. It will be this kind of special special notion. If you see in this first time it will be quite 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 strange. So this is a gamma point. Then you have also there's also six corners. Um, in the reciprocal space. And there will be two vectors which represent the translation in this reciprocal space. And we introduce them here. It will be A1 star and A2 star. And uh, and you write them usually. So if you write the, 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 lattice, the basis vectors for real lattice as the column vectors, so we will write those as the as this as the other row vectors so that you will see in a second why why that's uh, why that matters so a1 star in this definition will be 2 pi over square root of 3a and it's 1 and minus 1 over square root of 3 and a2 star will be and 4 pi over 3a and it's a 0 as you can see from the graph and uh, 1 and the definition is the following so you will have um, a i that's the real that's the real space vector let me, let me actually use the colors So a i dot a j star equals two pi delta i j is the Kronecker delta. So it's if i equals j, it's uh, one. If i equals j, i not equals j, it's uh, zero. Um, yeah, that's kind of like, that's why I have this, the reciprocity relationship and you have this reciprocal lattice. This is probably familiar if you were working on the crystal crystallography, those, um, the Bragg, Bragg reflections usually considered in the reciprocal space when you have this matching, matching conditions. And then you define the brilliant zone. So there is a concept of, uh, of the brilliant zone. Brilliant zone of oh, BZ. Uh, similarly, as you define actually unit cell in the real space, so you have this uh, wigner zeitz um, notation in the real space where you define those, um, you know, as the midsections, kind of like here, that will be your um, space here. So you kind of define it similarly, similarly here. It's kind of like copied multiple, multiple times, but then you can see Basically, this is your two vectors. So you cut them uh, in the middle and you produce this, um, the perpendiculars. And then you will do this for all these, um, for all these six vectors. In the middle points. And you continue them until they intersect. And this will build some sort of a hexagon shape. Yeah, 
this sort of a hexagonal shape structure that will be your it's called the first 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 Berlin zone and uh, the corners here let me label them and so those corners here um, they called K points so those are K points and uh, the one which is on the left you can label them let's say K and this one will be K prime and those are the only different K points all other points you can generate you can generate by um, mm, yeah by translating to um, using these two vectors so these two vectors would allow you to transition from K to K prime and so on those points in the middle uh, between the corners those called M points and you can have them also M and M prime oh, actually if I put M here so that would be then K and this would be this would be K prime and we have a gamma point in the middle the gamma point so we have M points, K points, and the gamma point. Those are those are points where the reciprocal vectors have some interesting uh, properties there, and uh, that's where we will use this concept of um, of the momentum or the or the wave number. So where you have H bar K is the uh, momentum, but sometimes it's called quasi. Quasi momentum or crystal momentum. And you can think about this in terms of what happens if your momentum of the of the electron actually so the particle goes with some momentum and then it exceeds the value of the first Berlin zone. Because you can have these translation vectors which kind of like um, limit this region. So you can generate any point. Uh, outside this region um, using these vectors it kind of snaps it back and uh, so imagine the particle kind of moves you know you have like two doors and the particle enters and then you kind of like keeps going and then it kind of re-enters from here so you have this kind of cyclic definition and usually you define those within like a plus or minus uh, pi over um, plus or minus pi of some um, some Berlin zone so within those uh, those vectors uh, restricted inside the Berlin zone this is, uh, has some interesting implications. So those would be actually those points, actually, I think, where this kind of reflection happens. Yeah, those points, not the, not the points inside. Those where you have these vector translations. Yeah, so in this, in this sense, you can have those K and K prime, or you can say also sometimes they're called plus or minus K, uh, Plus or minus k points, which will be in this in this particular um, drawing is not uniquely defined. You can you can define them uh, if you have different basis sets. You will have a different positions as well. But if we are on the same page, so it should be something like this. We have four pi uh, plus or minus four pi over three square root of three a e to the e e x um, oh, using that notation. It's uh, uh, one zero, and those those two points, basically this one and this one, those are the only kind of unique points which are like plus or minus symmetric. So one is a plus, the other one would be minus, and those all other points. So this is another k point, this is another k prime, this is another k prime, and this is another k. So those four, they they are the same as so each of those. K prime points is the same as this one, so you can have, you can see this K prime can be generated to this one by by this by these two A1 and A, A1 star and A2 star vectors by translation there. You can geom geometrically see how it's can done. So basically this one is the same as this one, and this one can be represented as the first applying A1 plus A2, so to, to get to the same point, and then all other four can be also generated. Uh, similarly, so now we can now we can go to the um, 
to the bands, to the electronic bands, and we will be only considering the pi bands. And for that, we will use the, the tight banding model. 